on Saturday. After we'll now, talk about it as a staff. I thought we had pretty good work. We got a good camp. Push these guys hard, and we got to evaluate you know, where we're at. Uh, we feel like the most the team is. What do we need to see on Saturday? And the decisions we got to make. And then as for uh, Jalen Mayfield wasn't out there. He was sick. Sick. Okay, so it's not no. the back issue. Okay. He was sick. And uh, CP was right. Yeah, goal. <laughs> Uh, CP, no, we're just, we got to form the plan to get them ready to go for the one. Yeah, Coach, how do you feel the, uh, <clears throat> the work when Coach Doug said the spirit of cooperation was awesome. great? It's and, a uh, real no. practice. It's a real joint practice. You got two professional staffs, teams that are trying to get better and understanding uh, the objective out there, and we got a good situation with work. Can't thank Doug and the staff and really the Jacksonville players. It was awesome. Yeah, what do you think? I see. I, I get fined if I talk about it, so I'm curious what you thought on some of the calls. Uh, no, you don't want to get fined, do you? No, I don't, I don't have any thoughts on the calls. Oh, come I, on. I, I, <laughs> take, I mean, come on. That's taking the easy way out here, D-Led. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm asking a coaching question. I know well, that. you're trying to get me fined, so no, what are you no, asking? No, no, no. Because okay. when you have penalties, those are coaching opportunities. That's what I'm yeah. trying to go to. Yeah, no. yeah in all seriousness, yeah. So what, what's – how did you try to take advantage of those coaching opportunities this week and we got the refs out here? Yeah, we uh, talked through them, you know, because down. as you're going through the preseason, what are the points of emphasis? Can they – clarification of certain calls, like with, with Ade's penalty, right? You know, you're trying to clarify those um, and the points of emphasis. You know, the stuff that I always say you can control, we can control pre-snap. Logistics, our operation, pre-snap penalties – that's the stuff that drives me insane. Obviously, you don't want to have the penalties in between the snaps, penalties of aggression, right? We got to clean the holds up. Your hands are outside and you're clamping. God doesn't get it. I'm going to call it every time. So we can be better fundamentally, and that's what you coach off of, to your point. Um, but having the refs out here, having Jerome and his staff is awesome because I get to go in there and talk to them. And as you guys know, they're making calls, bang, bang. And then obviously, every fan on TV, when they slow it down in real time, like, it gets hard. Easier said than done, but you have to have perspective and cooperation. And the, uh, you know, uh, the other item is, you know, once you do get them corrected, uh, or not, my next question is, you know, just how difficult the, uh, the cut down is. You know, your roster was symmetrical last year, 25, 25, and 3. Is that the formula? Or that goes, you know, no, how? it's always going to change, d -Led. And then there's always, uh, you know, the new normal now, right? You've got the 53. You've got a 16 person practice squad. You've got elevations, you know, you can use. There's a lot of different roster mechanisms, you know. And it's continuing. I mean, you saw there's players that we added late. There's other guys that we developed that we expect to help us at some point. So there's a lot of strategy that goes along with it. Uh, you know, nobody's 53, and then you, you know, have a pizza party and you're on scholarship. That's not happening. I mean, there's a, it's very fluid, and, and it's good. It's good for the health of the game, developing players. So we, we got a lot of decisions, but. Even next week, it's nothing's set in stone. Where have you maybe seen the biggest jump or the biggest surprise to you that he's been able to do this? I mean, you're saying he can't do it? No, I'm just saying because you're buying in the narratives because he came from the CFL, he didn't come from Alabama. Who cares? Players come from everywhere. Everybody's got the same opportunity. He's taking advantage of every opportunity. And he's translated everything he's done off season to on the practice field, and he's shown up so far in games. And uh, excited to see where it goes. If you went into a game with him as your starting nickel, would you be okay with that at this point? Anybody who put out there, we're okay with. Again, because you put people put labels on, and they got they got to fight the biases of groupthink. A lot of good players have come to a lot of places in the NFL. Whatever it's uh, Itawamba Community College, give you hundred dollars, you can guess who came from there. He did spend some time here. Came by the way of CFL. That's a trivia question. Anybody know who, what receiver it was? Picked up the cell phone on the end zone. Go hard. Took that one. Itawamba Community College. Played for the Memphis Mad Dogs. Played for the CFL Memphis Mad Dogs. So guys come from everywhere. Um, again, when they get an opportunity to come on here, uh, you got a chance to go earn it. And so I'm excited for a lot of our guys. Mad Dog dance. I did. You know, you're also evaluating guys in the kicking game. Sure. How does that change maybe your in-game strategy? Let's say it's a, a fourth and inches. Right. You, if you need to see a kick, you want to see Liam get another snap, whether it's a short snap on a field goal where you may in potentially a regular season game go for it. 
you got to make a decision. Now you guys get an op- let's get an opportunity to get an operation on, on the field goal. Um, same thing the kickoff. You want to go see some guys cover. Let's put it up there and make them return it. Um, and you, you know, without those are evaluation tools without the pressure of the regular season. Arthur, can you talk a little bit about the culture of this team and, yeah. and what you're trying to build and still and, and how different it might be the second training camp versus a year ago? Just yeah, I think it's going to be different every year. I mean, the foundation you're trying to set, I think our guys understand that, what our core values are. And I think every year you're going to fight this, whether you've got great expectations or, you know, you're ranked uh, the 35th, you know, roster and coaching staff out of 32 teams. Same, same. You got to go prove it every year. And you want to keep that competition. You never want to get complacent, keep things in perspective. And the good teams improve as the, years go, as the year goes on. Even if you come out hot, it's a long grind. And that's the objective to keep turning competition, to keep improving, and uh, to be there at the end. How have you changed this personally as a head coach, second, you know, going to the second season? Perhaps? Yeah, I hope to ch- change every year. I get, I'm, yeah. I'm fortunate enough to get to do this. I got, I'm thankful every day. I got one of the greatest jobs in the world. I get to go coach football in the National Football League. I don't, that's not lost on me. Thankful that it's here in Atlanta with a great organization. So I hope every year I'm here, I get better as a coach. So certainly coming in year two, there's things you learn along the way. And I don't think you ever want to as a person, no matter if I'm 80 years old, I don't want to stop learning and growing. So I'm always looking for ways to improve. But certainly, you know, there's a lot of un- – you've gone through a season, there's always going to be surprises every day I walk in, expect the unexpected. And uh, it certainly helps. You know, this last game, um, you know, I don't – you know, uh, it's, it's traditionally been where you see guys trying to really push, really push to make those mm-hmm. last spots and so forth. Uh, and a lot of starters fell back. Uh, you know, what are you looking for, for for your approach to this last game? Yeah, that's something we'll finalize um, tonight, tomorrow as a staff. Um, you know, I feel pretty good to where we're at. We've gotten guys reps. You know, something that's one thing where we changed from a year ago where we assessed and again, this different team, and we felt like our guys needed to play for multiple reasons. Um, so we'll, we'll weigh that and weigh, you know, the opportunities for some of these young guys that we need to get more looks at. Justin Schaefer looked like he got a little bit more room with the second All those guys did. Uh, uh, news, mm-hmm. news is group. News and the boys, they, they, they come out swinging. Uh, Leroy, Schaefer, Newsflash, Harry, and Tyler. So, um, you know, we'll see. But those, those guys get a lot of work in some capacity Saturday afternoon. They've had a month to kind of show you what they've got, right? Sure. So how much pay is already in the barn? And how Never much in the barn, have- dude. Never in the barn. Make the team based on what happened Saturday? Absolutely. A bunch of them are. Well, we'll see. I mean, you want to go ahead and just tell everybody it's over? I mean, it's every day it changes, you know. I mean, it's like there's like an ebb and flow. Guys get, they come out hot, fresh legs, first three or four days, maybe flash a little bit in your first mock game or whatever you want to call it, scrimmage. And then as the camp goes on, is you know, so you had these hot takes early on. It's just long, slow, and steady, and you – the hardest thing is to be objective, take everything in perspective. So everything we do matters. Certainly, it's a very important game for a lot of guys Saturday. It certainly looks like you get two different defensive uh, philosophies. How much does that help you get ready for the season but to go against so the, the Jets and now these guys? Yeah, completely different. Um, it's great. It's great work. You know, you, you get prepared. You go up to New York. You get that four down, those jet fronts, the old Jim Washburn fronts, guys flying up the field. Um, and you go down to this scheme, you know, a lot of people are playing base five down fronts now, whether they're under, you know, jam fronts, you know, there's a lot of base five down fronts in this league right now. So this is a good scheme. I mean, obviously we got multiple schemes with Dean. So, um, and Mike Caldwell, I mean, I got, I think he's a terrific football coach and that's a good front. So we're very thankful we got that work in today. Hey, Arthur, you may have touched on it now, sure. but. What, do you, what message do you have to your team as it relates to the expectations or the low expectations that Doesn't people matter. have for the It's like, here's what I kind of refer to it. Good or bad, they're peripheral opponents. Because neither one of them are true. Because that's the best thing. It's, it's the most competitive, in my biased opinion, the most competitive league in all professional sports. And things can change on a dime for you in a week to week. And if you buy into groupthink narratives one way or the other, shame on you. It's toxic either way. And so the biggest, the hardest thing is to be objective, have perspective, and continue to, to, to 
make progress. That's all we try to do is make progress here. How do you think that um, this camp went as a whole over the course of the last four or five months? Yeah, obviously nothing's perfect, but very encouraged. I think we've had a great camp. Um, you know, it gives us it gives us a chance as we we, gotta, we we still got a lot of work ahead of us before Saturday and certainly before New Orleans on September 11th. So, uh, please, like I said, I love coaching these guys. These guys work; um, they're fun to be around. So, we'll keep we'll keep chopping away at it.